Welcome back to my video, welcome back to my channel. Today a new video about Mako Friends. Um, in this video I am going to work on the rear suspension, a little bit on the layout of the battery pack and the rear axle and the suspension mounts. Um, first of all we'll start off with the suspension mount using the same rubbers and in the front suspension and then I'm going to gently work towards the rear of the car. Now, ideally with this car, especially because yeah, my ultimate goal is also to drift with this car, um, is to have independent rear suspension. Now, looking at that, I cannot really find something that I like. Um, so for now, the goal is just to have a little bit like a go-kart rear axle, just a, a rigid or solid rear axle with a sprocket and a chain drive on one side of the axle and a disc brake on the other side of the axle if you missed that on the previous videos where uh, that I made on the rear axle um, so yeah that is basically what I've been working on and um, yeah the next step will be also to start integrating the rear suspension and the, the, yeah, the coilovers and, and, and a push rod setup or whatever I decide to do on that um, yeah, so stay tuned and I will explain a little bit more as the movie continues. Thank you for watching, bye bye. As you can see in um, the model that I use as a reference, I have made a panel van hot rod body as well. And for that panel van hot rod body, um, I have a lot of space in the trunk basically. So one of the things I also wanted to do is make um, an insert so that I could at least uh, fit one grocery crate in the back. Now you might say one grocery bag, that's not a lot, or a crate, that's not a lot. But yeah, you have to imagine that this vehicle was only a meter high. And yeah, with a battery pack and suspension and the chassis in a way, you lose easily half a meter. So to be able to fit just one crate for um, yeah for for groceries is already quite um, quite a challenge. Um, so um, I made a tub, a fiberglass tub, uh, with some uh, neoprene um, inserts so that I can fit a, a grocery crate in the back and to the sides have then some space for uh, yeah bags shopping bags basically um, made a small window in it so I can look through it to the back um, I had to change out the, the roll hoop a little bit I had to spread the legs out a little bit further so that I could keep them quite far to the back um, and also I, yeah, I shifted them forward a little bit um, but in the end I think it looks great for that particular model and um, yeah maybe there are more models uh, to come that will suit this this um, this design um, yeah so then with this car it is also a little bit more functional if you have that body then you can also do some groceries with it which I think is nice uh, to, to have it's not really per se the intended goal of the car um, but yeah, of course, it's it's definitely a possibility to um, to have something like that.
As I mentioned, I had to place the roll hoop a little bit forward to get that that um, yeah that that trunk liner in there, and that also meant that I had to change the battery up slightly. I have to redo the battery uh, because um, uh, I work at a company where we also build electric vehicles. We have this type of battery, but in reality, this type of battery um, is not really suited for. Um, yeah, OEM manufacturers because it just provides too little data um, to to really control the battery and to understand the battery to learn from the battery and to optimize the battery so um, I have to look at a different battery I know that there are a lot of people who build um, uh, kit cars and, and stuff like that with uh, different types of batteries there are some better options out there and, and um, also some packages out there I need to have quite a modern battery because the older batteries um, they don't have a lot of um, energy per kilowatt or per kilogram sorry um, and, uh, and the newer batteries they have a little bit more uh, energy density as it's called and um, yeah so I need to need to go and look for another one I in the tight space that I have I want to have effectively 10 kilowatts at at least 80% DOD maybe 90% DOD but um, uh, sorry DOD is depth of discharge so uh, you cannot use a battery 100% you always have to leave something in there generally speaking and um, on the older batteries it was uh, that you can use 70% or 30% had to be left in a the battery these days they are going to 90% 80% 90% uh, to ensure that the battery doesn't um, yeah, doesn't die basically because you discharge it too far um, so yeah but uh, that's one of the things I have to do I have to uh, still find a new type of battery that that um, yeah that, that guys have a little bit more experience with um, so that's definitely something I will be look for looking forward in uh, in one of the next videos that I will, uh, will bring up One of the other things is that uh, if you look at the rear suspension there's not a lot of room with the battery pack there um, and you might say okay yeah well what's your rear suspension travel well what you have to imagine is that first of all I'm running quite a big tire and the tire of course has a lot of suspension in it already um, secondly it's a very lightweight vehicle it's already very low to the ground so I don't have a lot of suspension travel um, I'm intending to run a 40 mil suspension travel and that doesn't sound like a much um, if you have like a Ferrari for instance they also don't have a lot of suspension travel you are looking also about 40 millimeters for example now um, I am running on my Peugeot 406 coupe uh, I am running um, Intrax suspension as you might have seen in my other videos um, and um, you know uh, it's an expensive uh, depending of course what you think is expensive but it is quite an expensive brand it is a very high quality brand and they can do stuff with their technology that is just amazing um, you can ride your car super low but still be amazingly comfortable 
and um, especially because this car is so light yeah, you don't need a lot of suspension as I mentioned also with the amount of suspension that you already have in your tire so um, I can fit my packaging of the battery pack and the rear suspend, uh, sorry, the rear axle and the brakes and the, and the sprockets for the drivetrain. I can fit that very closely together. The only disadvantage that I have in this whole ordeal is, of course, that I have a rigid rear axle. And what that means is that you get torsion between the left and the right wheel. That means that the left wheel can be lifted while the right wheel wants to stay on the ground. Um, and this angle on the axle um, might pull a wheel inward but also of course yeah, might have a bigger impact than, than that 40 mil maybe uh, that you want mm -hmm. and, and but of course yeah the battery pack is in the center so the deviation between the left and the right wheel <coughs> in the center will not be a lot um, so it's all relative mm -hmm. um, but in the end yeah I think that it will work out fine um, and another thing is that on the bottom on a battery pack you generally don't need that much space it's generally at the top where you need to space uh, need to space because of the heat dissipation um, so yeah I think it will be fine but in the end yeah we have to test it so two things I want to add uh, first of all um, if you look at the disc brake and on the other side the sprocket um, then you also realize maybe that if the rear axle is torsioning so the left wheel is higher than the right wheel then um, the sprocket might hit the battery pack um, so of course that is something we don't want um, therefore I don't like that torsioning and therefore I, that's one of the reasons why I really don't like a, a solid rear axle but yeah um, finding something else is quite difficult at this point um, maybe it, in the future I will find something preferably I would like something where is, I see that some ATVs have this where you have like a center ax axle that is rigid and then you have drive shafts going out to the side which are bolted to that rigid center section and then on one side you have the sprocket and the other side you have the disc brake just like I have that would be perfect um, I've seen it on some uh, quads and, and things like that so it is there and, and maybe it is something I, I will switch to um, so that is point one and the other point is you might say hey but why are you not uh, why are you forcing yourself to work in such a small area why not put your disc brakes on the outside of the chassis um, well yes in theory I could do that um, two reasons I don't want to do it first of all as I just mentioned I hope to switch to uh, independent suspension at the rear so with drive shafts so I know I don't have a lot of suspension travel so I could do with a very short drive shaft um, so yes potentially th for that reason it could um, and the other reason I don't want to do it is because I want to allow a lot of different body styles so it's the same, I don't want to run a suspension strut in the front but a push rod setup is because I don't want to have a big part of the car hanging out there. Um, because if I, uh, so for example, one of the bodies I've done is a retro race car, like a cigar racer. And it is a very narrow body. So if my disc brake and my chain block and my electric motor are all hanging out, um, yeah, that, that's not going to work for me. Uh, and on the other side as well, if I'm having a motor there and it goes up and down, then it will hit the chassis. Um, so that is also not an option. They need to be on the inside and uh, that gives me the flexibility for the body styles. And uh, so that is the reason um, I'm doing it like this. And that is also the reason why my battery pack is so small and the space is so uh, constrained. But uh, at least I hope you understand where I'm coming from. So you've seen me uh, design the rear suspension mount on the inside of the chassis, nice and close to the battery pack and underneath the, the basically the crest rails that are there. Um, and I'm trying to uh, design a, f a simple frame that I can use to connect all the parts that I have. So for example, uh, the axle needs support with some uh, bearings and I need to hold the caliper down for the rear brake system 
um, yeah I need to mount the motor somewhere and all that needs to be held together with the subframe it needs to be rigid enough so that it can take the torsional forces from the left and the right wheel um, driving over different bumps um, yeah so all in all um, it is a little bit uh, of figuring out what to do how to proceed forward um, one thing I did notice as well when I was working on it is that the rear uh, crash support bar basically um, was a little bit in the way with the motor if the motor goes up then it, it quite quickly touches the um, uh, the battery pack and also the rear bar that goes across so what I'm trying to do is as well is uh, uh, raise that bar up I haven't not done that in this video I've done it in a later video but then at least you know that I already thought about it and um, yeah that I was working on um, yeah, removing that bar to or at least change that design of the bar so I could get more space also that bar was quite complex uh, with several uh, bends in it and uh, I now made, took a little bit thicker plate and just simplified it a lot. Um, it is generally used to just hold the ends together because the roll bar already braces it left to right. Um, and of course, as you might have seen, the transition from the side to those rear strut mounts is quite a complex shape, but it's, it's, a, it's a shape that really focuses the energy um, well and spreads the energy over the side of the vehicle if the vehicle is hit from the back um, yeah so I think that, that um, the plate at the back should not be so complex can be just a simple straight piece with some holes in it a little bit thicker material as I mentioned um, so that is also something I'm going to change or I already have changed So in this video I had a lot of smaller short clips of what I've been doing on the rear suspension and on some of the functional parts of the vehicle. Um, I hope you appreciate um, yeah, the time and effort that I put in it. I hope that you appreciate the content. 
I hope that you also appreciate with how little space I'm working with and how complex and how uh, yeah how neatly together everything is how everything works together in a very tight space and of course we're not there yet but um, we are going in the right direction and I think chassis wise we're definitely going to a point where um, yeah where we can start uh, producing a first model to at least have something to look at to hold it and um, to also see what we need to change um, test the seating position check what you can see out of the vehicle so I'm really looking forward to go that direction and if someone wants to support that please let me know because I can really use the help on that one um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed the content of this if you do please give it a thumbs up give it a like or, or uh, yeah, a comment uh, consider subscribing and uh, yeah, if you want to share it with friends, please do so. And um, thank you for watching. Um, I see that the amount of um, followers has been growing slightly the last uh, couple of weeks. So I really appreciate that. And uh, I hope you see to see you on the next video. And thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.